You know, the hardest home to sell is actually not your own. It's that of a family member, a parent, a relative, a loved one that's really close to you because the weight of your world tends to be on your shoulders. You're the one that has to make all the important decisions. You're the one that has to navigate other family members and make sure that those choices are the right ones. And sometimes it can feel really overwhelming and you're wondering what the best approach is. You're thinking, what do I do with my parents' belongings? They've lived in their home for decades. Do I get rid of everything? Do I, I keep it? Do I clean it? Do I do updates? There's a whole oodle of questions that are going through your mind and you just wanna be sure that you're making the right decision. Not to mention all the emotional needs that you're having to navigate. You've got the emotional needs of your loved one that you're trying to meet and be there for them. But then you've got also the other needs and emotional factors of other family members that you're also having to navigate. I want you to know that you don't have to go this alone. I'm Melissa Shaw of Lewis Realtors, and I've served thousands of clients over the last two decades and hundreds of them in the same situation that you're facing right now. And I know that this seems really hard, but it really doesn't have to be that hard. It can definitely be easier. And there's a couple of tips I wanted to share with you as far as things to consider when you're considering um, selling your family member, loved one's home, is to, if it is a parent, you'd wanna make sure that all the estate planning is in place. You wanna make sure that the legal paperwork is covering you to cover the affairs because when you do go to list your home, you're going to need to be the personal representative of the sale and have authority to make decisions for your loved one. But you'll need to seek legal counsel on that from a attorney on what the best approach is for you and your family. And you'll also want to consider some curb appeal options. Now we're in a market right now where millennials are paying a lot of money for homes, but we're also seeing baby boomers, which haven't maybe done as many updates to their home. So we're facing a crisis here or a situation here where you've got millennials on a budget, which are our biggest buying consuming people right now of about 45.5 within the buying. Um, and then you've got an aging population that we need to take into consideration of what are the right updates to do? Do we do updates? And that's something that we can talk about together on what's right for you once I know and learn about your needs. But it's definitely a factor that needs discussion. Curb appeal can be as simple as just trimming up vegetation and pressure washing and just making sure that the shutters are freshly cleaned the window coverings are looking good from the outside to the inside. There's some, there's some tips that I can offer you in that situation to improve the curb appeal. The curb appeal is super important because insider tip is our local MLS makes us put an exterior photo first. So it's going to be the first thing that a prospective buyer is going to see on your home. So the curb appeal is worth doing a few things to make your home visibly appealing at first look. Inside, we're just gonna to wanna to make sure that you've got the light bulbs, lights changed. If you've got a budget for changing lighting, staging experts say that lighting and paint are gonna be the two top things that you should do for your home appeal. Another thing to consider when selling your loved one's home is whether to hire an, an estate planner or not. An estate planner, this is what they do for a living. They're very good at it, 
but the benefit to you is that they come in and do a lot of the heavy lifting. It enables you to be able to get out some of those personal items that your loved one wants. And it not only helps you with the heavy lifting, but it also helps some of the emotional toll on your loved one. You know, when your loved one is having to move out of being in a home for so long, there's a lot of memories and it can be quite emotional because this is a big deal. When they've lived in a home for so long, there's a lot of emotional ties. There's a lot of emotional memories. There's often years of memories of raising kids, maybe husbands, wife, lost family members. There's, it's more than just selling a home. It's transitioning into another stage of life that often brings up a lot of different things. So sometimes when you have an estate planner that comes in after you've progressively gone through the process of working through getting items out of the home that your loved one wants um, or personal items that family members want to keep, then it makes the process easier for someone to come in and sell those items that you don't want, that don't have sentimental value, give you a little extra cash to maybe do some home improvements that might be needed and recommended. Another thing to consider is safety and security. Definitely going to want to take into consideration maybe if your loved one's home is going to be kept vacant, investing in some Wi-Fi activity to keep monitoring the home, but also maybe keeping lights on timers um, that come on and off at different times because it's easy to see if someone's just doing an electric timer and it's coming on at the same day at the same time. So maybe alternating the times that, that the lights come on. I have served my clients in the Portland, Oregon and Vancouver, Washington metro markets for over two decades now. And I'd love the opportunity to get your questions answered about selling your home for your loved one. So I encourage you to click the link below and book a call with me to get your questions answered as I would absolutely love to come alongside of you and assist you in selling your loved one's home, but guiding you and preparing you each step of the way in the process and being a great resource for you.